You must understand that when we talk of things, people, houses and waters and mountains, that thinking about them that way emphasizes their difference. It stresses differentiation. But you see, you don't really know what differentiation is unless you know what sameness is just as you don't know what to be is unless you know the meaning of not to be. And the boundaries of things which outline them, we say, well, uh, I begin maybe up here, and above my head it's not me anymore. So this cranium thing, the skull with hair on top of it, divides me from space. True if you want to look at it that way, but it's equally true that my cranium joins me to space. Imagine what would happen to me if there weren't any space around me. My outline would thereupon disappear. Because you see, every boundary needs two sides, the inside and the outside. And you can't separate them. So boundaries are held in common. They join things as much as they divide them. Now, we are taught, you see, not to see that way. Our conscious attention is captured by figures within backgrounds, and it tends to ignore backgrounds. It is captured by things that move rather than things that are 
relatively still. And so when we see someone going up a hill, we say the man is going up the hill. We don't see also that the hill is coming down to the man. Every pull is also a push, and every push is also a pull. So you can become aware of this tremendous interconnectedness of everything. And that is, in a way, what we mean by relativity. Because relativity means relatedness. Just as fronts go with backs and tops with bottoms, insides with outsides, solids with spaces, so everything that there is goes together. And it makes no difference whether it lasts a long time or whether it lasts a short time. A galaxy goes together with all the universe just as much as a mosquito, which has a very short life. <laughs>